Right, today we're going to give you a little video presentation or PowerPoint presentation on how you can probably, um, by learning a few words, avoid getting caught. So uh, we'll start off by saying that the following procedure applies for a summons to appear in court or for any commercial document sent to your name. Now, in this presentation, we're going to show you what a name is and what an identity is. So it's all about the name. Most people don't understand what a summons is, so they panic and race out to hire a lawyer. Is that your best option? Maybe not. In most cases, lawyers are part of the game, and so you'll end up getting screwed and pay nicely for the privilege. So, how can you avoid going to court? It's all about the words. So, if you learn the words, you can start to set yourself free. Um, probably the two things that you will need more than anything else to get you started are that a Roman court, or the courts that we know, do not operate according to any true rule of law, but by, by presumptions of the law. So if you don't rebut those presumptions, they become fact, and they stand as the truth in law. So get that very, very clear. Rebut the presumptions, and they have no standing. If you don't rebut them, they become fact. And the other thing is to know who you are and who you are not. Once you get those two things fixed firmly in your head, then you're on the right way to setting yourself free. Okay, so... If you go down to your local bank and grab a copy of this book, The Code of Banking Practice, you can see my one's fairly well read, it's uh, pretty wrinkly, but you can go down the bank and get a nice brand new one. And in there you're going to find some very, very interesting things. Uh, down there you can see where we've highlighted it, it'll become more apparent in the next slide, but in this code, we are and us means your bank. So here it is a bit you should be able to see it a bit clearer. In this code, we, our, or us means your bank. You or your means you, the customer. You'll need to understand this because this is a code and it can only be cracked if you know the keys. So now what, what we're doing is we're cracking the code for you. The banking code is telling us how we ref should refer to ourselves. The code is telling us that if we refer to ourselves as we, our, or us, then we are the bank. The code is also telling us that you or your means that you then become the customer. So beware, the customer is the one that always pays. Any summons court paperwork or debt collector's letters will always be addressed to a name but then they go on con <laughs> then you'll find from then on the only part of the letter or the uh, paperwork from the courts will be in the name but from then on everything will be referring to you for example the plaintiff makes this claim against you you are the defendant. They can never put the real persons, uh, the real person there. The only way that this happens is that you accept that you are the living man, and then they have joined her. So if you can, if you can remember this, you is the customer. You have to rebut, or we have to rebut, that we are you. Once we rebut that we are you, we're the bank, or the banker, and they become the customer. So they'll go away and leave it alone. You is not your name. In fact, you is not a name. So what is a name? So if we go to both years, it's one or more words used to distinguish a particular individual, such as Socrates or Benjamin Franklin. 
and this is still from the same uh, Bogey is online. Go online and have a look at this. No man can have more than one Christian name. So in general, a corporation must contract and sue and be sued by its corporate name. The living man, John Henry, has only one Christian name. The artificial name, John Henry Doe, in general, a corporation exists by contract, sues and is sued by its corporate name. In case you missed it, John Henry is the living man and cannot be summoned to court. The court is where John Henry Doe, the corporation, goes to fight other corporations. So the moment that you fail to rebut you, you become the corporation, John Henry Doe. Read it again. In general, a corporation must contract and sue and be sued by its corporate name. So how does the living man become a party to the con contract? By thinking words like you are referring to him. By hiring a lawyer to defend him. By replying to the claim and not rebutting it or arguing with it. By allowing the police to arrest him. The moment, the moment that the living man, John Henry, accepts that he is you, he then becomes Doe, a corporation. Doe being a corporation can sue and be sued. And this is how they, they trick us all the time. John Henry cannot. Okay, the persons who institute actions for the recovery of their rights... And those persons against whom they are instituted are the parties to the actions. The former are called plaintiffs and the latter defendants. Once again, this is another way that they trick the living man into believing that he is a defendant. It must be rebutted. The term parties is understood to include all persons who are directly interested in the subject matter in issue, who have right to make defence. You do not want to make defence, you want to rebut the claim that you are the defendant, that you are anything else but the living man. <clears throat> or appeal to the... Persons not having these rights are regarded as strangers to the cause. It is of the utmost importance of bringing actions to have proper parties, for however just and meritorious the claim may be, if a mistake has been made in making wrong persons, either plaintiffs or defendants, it's telling you there, if <coughs> you rebut it, then you will not become the plaintiff or the defendant. Or include many or too few persons as parties, the plaintiff may in general be defeated. Now what that, what that, uh, if you go back through that and get this clear in your head, you will see the moment that you rebut it, that you are the defendant, then the plaintiff may in general be defeated. Because it tells you, including too many or too few persons, they have to get joinder between John Henry and Doe the Corporation. Once you give them that joinder by not, by not rebutting it, it then is a fact of law. Take, it will take a little while to get this sorted clear in your head, but if you read this over and over, you will see it. So how does the living, the living man settle his differences? The good book tells us in Matthew, Matthew 5.25, Agree with thine adversary quickly, whilst thou art in the way with him, lest at any time the adversary deliver thee to the judge, and the judge deliver thee to the officer, and thou be cast into prison. So rebut it quickly and do it in private. Never go to court. Only corporations go to court. So rebut it quickly. Send the paperwork straight back to the person who served it on you, rebutting that you are the defendant. Put simply, we reply to the bent copper in his private capacity. And we say, John Henry, in his inherent jurisdiction, accepts your claim for value and offers to settle in the private upon bent copper, 
providing satisfactory proof to substantiate his claim that the claim was addressed to you, but was served on John Henry. It's that simple. So, Bent Copper is now required to testify under his own full commercial liability that John Henry is you, and of course they cannot do that. So you rebut their claims right there and then, they have to go away. All they're doing is coming in as mercantile agents and raiding your trust account, making you the customer so that you pay. But if you go and check your own paperwork, you'll find that the birth certificate warns you this certificate is not evidence of the identity of the person presenting it. Now get this very clear, um, you'll find that anyone in the military or in the police force, they do not have names, they have identities. So if you ask for their name, they will give you a number. So I'm just going to give you a little clue here, you want an identity, give them your birth certificate number. That's your identity. The birth certificate cannot prove the identity, but the number can. So, do we use it, why do we use it to, uh, to verify our identity? As it confirms our name, not our identity. Every time they ask you for your birth certificate, so that you can get a driver's license or a bank account or anything like that, say, so look, that doesn't prove my identity. It only proves my name. Therefore, if we continue to use our name, we will continue to continue being the customer and not the bank. I know what I'd rather be. I want to be the bank. Learn the words. Stop using me or I. It's we, our or us to, to show your true identity. Me or I is the name. And never be... You. I wouldn't want to be you.